So a lot of people have been asking for my thoughts on the sandbox changes as part of patch 7.3.0 aka season of the wish. A lot of stuff was changed this season so I have kind of eight topics here I wanted to go over. Uh, I got a lot of questions on my damage video for this season as well as the weapons video about my thoughts on some of the exotic armor changes. Uh, I talked about some of that in the past uh, in the last video. Uh, stuff like Celestial Nighthawk, for example, because that's an exotic armor change. But um, there's a couple other things here that are not necessarily damage related, but endgame PvE related. So they fall under the kind of uh, category that this channel, uh, the content that we talk about on this channel. So uh, yeah, let's get started. First, let's talk about exotic armor. We're going to go straight down the, the patch notes from number one all the way down to number eight. So first up, exotic armor. Um, some people have been testing Sect of Force Aeons. Uh, mostly because this marking effect, right? It's kind of like a debuff. When you mark a target, for example, like a champion in, in a GM Nightfall, they take more damage from your allies. And this kind of marking debuff effect stacks with everything. So it stacks with debuffs, it stacks with buffs, it stacks with like artifact perks, it stacks with everything. However, unfortunately, this is on Sect of Force. And Sect of Force is not a very good sect. If you're going to run Aeons in a GM, you're probably better off running Insight. And if this was on something like Insight, right? If you could have like a an Aeon user on Insight mark a target for allies might be more useful, but unfortunately no one really uses Sect of Force and uh, champions already die. Champions, elite, mini bosses, these already die very quickly. It would be a different story if you could use this on a boss, right? Because if you could use this on a raid boss, for example, it would be, you know, 20% stacking with everything would be crazy. But there is nothing right now that is under the category of boss, uh, so underneath I should say, so champions, elite, mini bosses that doesn't already die in like two rockets that are buffed properly. So. This doesn't really, you know, not that useful. It's cool, I guess, but, you know, doesn't affect bosses. Uh, next up, we have Insight. This this change doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, people weren't really using um, the 35% buff regardless. Uh, there were some small scenarios, you know, uh, pretty pretty rare circumstances where people were aware of, I, th I think most people didn't even know that this gives you, this used to give you a 35% buff, uh, excuse me. But um, now it's like, you know, that change being gone, I don't think anyone's going to miss it. And then um, this is basically the, uh, sec that gives you buffs for your teammates dying. Uh, I think some people use this in PvP, like I said before, for some weird things, but again, this is uh, not something I think anyone cares about, not something that's going to affect endgame PvE. Okay, the hunter changes are probably the more, mo, morse, morst, <laughs> the most, the more impactful of the three. Uh, Shards of Galanor, uh, this is pretty cool because not only do you get half your super energy on hit, uh, which most of the super energy uh, armor, exotic armors, uh, they give it to you on kills rather than on hits. Uh, this can be kills or hits, so this is pretty nice. And then it also gives you that effect on top where throwing knife kills give you some super energy. So I'm sure some of you have, for example, seen Salted Greppo do like a, a solo two phase uh, of the second boss of the new dungeon using Shards of Galanor. And um, it's certainly a way to get your Blade Barrage back during damage. Um, that being said, you know, pretty situational, I think, still and definitely overshadowed in terms of solar hunter exotics by some of the other stuff that's coming down the line, specifically Aphidius Spathe. Now, Aphidius Spathe was already a decent exotic, right? Um, for the cost of one dodge, you can get two knives back. You have two knives that both recharge under the same charge. And um, it's really great because a lot of the complaints that people have with solar hunter and endgame PvE are the fact that you can't really get knife kills very often or very easily. And for that reason, you know, a lot of the exotics that require you to get knife kills are not very potent because the enemies are tankier, right? Aphidius Bathe kind of remedies this because it gives you two knives. So even if you don't kill with the first knife, you can kill or ignite with the second one. So Aphidius Bathe, it also has a lot of damage potential now, right? It gives you, it gives you kind of like um, an Atheris Embrace kind of effect with your knives, gives you more damage. And uh, on top of that, it also, um, you remember that one-two punch stacks with throwing knife, right? It stacks with weighted throwing knife. So uh, it is something that is worth considering, uh, possibly, to use in higher level content. Um, obviously, GMs aren't out yet, so people are not able to kind of test these builds in there. But from what I've seen in endgame content, mid to endgame content, this exotic is definitely one of the better neutral exotics for Solar Hunter. Uh, Stompies, a lot of people were worried about this change affecting speedrunning specifically. Obviously, this is a PvP targeting nerf, as usual. Uh, or I, I guess I should say rework, because you don't need your class ability energy anymore. Um, I'm glad Bungie eventually, eventually got there and found their way to a nerf slash rework that made these less oppressive in PvP in terms of a raw jump acceleration time. Um, instead of punishing PvE players when they don't have their dodge, not being able to just have a nicer jump, uh, this is a much better play. And of course, for those of you who have tried, you know, shatter skating, etc, etc, 
uh, doing hunter PVE movement doesn't really feel much different. You do have a slower, more poomfier jump, but um, it's not a bad thing. And if anything, it kind of allows you to go a little bit further by increasing your airborne time because you take longer to go up uh, instead of in short bursts like you used to. It's a little bit more annoying if you're trying to jump up a series of short ledges rather than, you know, um, going a long distance. But it's not the biggest thing in the world and um, it's nicer than having to have your dodge energy. Uh, it means that now you can swap subclasses and you will immediately have the Stompy's effect instead of having to wait for your dodge, so pretty nice. Alright, next up we have Mechanigar's Trick Sleeves. Now, when I saw this change, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, this exotic was largely, uh, I don't know, pretty pretty mediocre because you have to stay at critical health. Uh, previously, you had to stay critical in order for you to have that sidearm bonus. However, now, uh, once you go critical, as long as you get some kills, you can have a kind of like RDM type multi-dodge effect where as long as you keep getting kills, you keep extending the duration of the damage bonus. And just as a reminder, this damage bonus is 100%, right? So sidearms are obviously, they are uh, mostly primary weapons, so not great. But for special sidearms like Forerunner and for the new dungeon sidearm, uh, this can be very, very good. This can give you a lot of damage, a very, very high DPS buff to these weapons. And on exotic sidearms, for example, like Rat King specifically, I think this will actually become a very, very good exotic. Um, imagine like, you know, a double damage Rat King that is just completely, you, you can basically just go on killing sprees with it very, very often, very, very quickly. Um, it will also be good on some some legendary sidearms as well that have ad clear perks. So Mechanist Trick Sleeves, I think is, uh, I would have to play test this, but just on paper seems to be very, very good. The only trouble you'd really have is just getting your uh, damage bonus to kind of start up but besides that it's like a uh, no risk and after that it's like a very very strong exotic you know double damage is a lot to get from an exotic uh, for weapon damage at least and not ability damage okay so next up we have the bombardiers i, yeah, I don't really <laughs> this doesn't really uh matter i'm assuming this is talking about it when you're on stasis so yeah this doesn't really matter i'm not a very good exotic uh triton vice a lot of people were asking me about triton vice uh, basically, Triton Vice and Syntheseps were brought together. Uh, Glaive-wise, I believe they have the same Glaive melee damage bonus, which is 100%. Um, that being said, I mean, I think this is a better exotic than it, what it was before, which is 30. 30 was barely noticeable. Um, now, the main thing is that I think the Glaive exotic this season is going to be Worm God Caress and possibly Winner's Guile if they decide to move the Worm God changes to Winner's Guile, which I think they should. Um, this they, they overshadow Triton Vice by a lot. I mean, they did in the past and they still do. Um, it just means that on Titan you're going to be using Worm Gods because uh, Worm Gods is has a much much higher damage bonus than Triton Vice and also has this meter so you can kind of it's it's basically perfect for Rome content you're almost never going to completely run out of damage bonus and um, it's a lot higher of a bonus like I said so I don't think Triton Vice I don't think 100% is enough for it to be very very strong um, I've seen some people mentioning like using the Hunter Exotic Glaive with this but eh, I don't know I I don't know if that's really high enough to to kind of compete with something like a Worm God uh, Titan Glaive build. But we'll have to see. Again, gems aren't out yet, so there's not really much to say yet. Uh, Celestial Nighthawk, I already talked about, but um, I guess I didn't talk about the neutral aspect, which is now getting precision kills. This is kind of like um, Practice Makes Perfect from Solar 2.0, when you could just get uh, precision hits and it would give you super energy boost. This is kind of a similar kind of uh, reference to, to that era, I guess. Uh, I don't think you would still use Celestial Nighthawk in general gameplay, though, because Getting precision kills is not super common in today's endgame sandbox. So, I don't know. I, I don't think you would take something like Nighthawk into a GM still. I don't, I don't really think that makes sense. Okay, finally, we have Titan. So, Titan exotic armor. Um, one of my friends was telling me that, like, Precious Scars is really good now. But just on paper and thinking about, you know, um, how Titan functions survivability-wise. Titan has two really strong subclasses right now, right? We have Void. Sorry, not Void. What am I saying? We have Solar and we have Strand. And Solar obviously took a hit because of the throwing hammer duration or like pickup nerf, uh, which I'll talk about as well. Um, but yeah, throwing hammer took a nerf. And so, you know, we have Strand, which Woven Mail took a nerf as well. But the fact is that you get tier one restoration for three seconds for getting a weapon kill that matches your subclass. And on the Solar subclass, you already have restoration really, really easily and can extend it very, very easily as well. Stuff like Soul Invictus and Healing Grenade, Ember of Empyrean. So this isn't really that useful and you're giving up your entire armor exotic just to get, you know, three seconds of restoration. So I think the real only benefit to this exotic is an encounter or a situation where you're very, very far away from enemies and you don't have a lot of leeway or room to kind of refresh off of. Um, it's kind of like a Laurelie type deal, although I, I, I don't know, I, I still think even Laurelie would be better than this. 
So the only thing I can really see being good for is getting restoration on subclasses that don't normally get restoration. But again, the two strongest Titan subclasses right now, one of them has access to restoration and the other one is Strand. So you have Woven Mail and yeah, I, I don't think Precious Scars really got buffed that much. I mean, I don't think it's like a meta defining exotic certainly, but definitely better than it used to be. Um, Severance Enclosure, I don't know of anybody that has tested that this season. Um, probably because it's been overshadowed by the other melee exotic changes. But, um, you know, if someone tests this and it ends up being pretty strong, you know, I wouldn't be that surprised. But I don't think it eclipses uh, some of the changes that come right below it, which we'll talk about right now. So Peregrine Greaves, um, I expect this to be very, very strong in GMs. There's a lot of Titan builds right now that I think are going to be very strong in GMs. This is one of them. Um, and that's because Peregrine Greaves, they made it so that you have to be airborne for a while before uh, the airborne kind of effect of increasing your shoulder charge damage applies. But they, so that basically kind of kills its ability to be used with 1-2 punch, I think at least, in most situations. Uh, maybe someone will find a way to make it work in some quirky way, but for the most part, you can't use this thing with a shock anymore. But the other thing is that now you refund all of your melee energy every time you hit a champion or tormentor or mini boss, which is like, obviously in a boss scenario, besides Nezarek, I and mean, people are like soloing Nezarek with this exotic, but outside of bosses like Nezarek that are tormentors, um, this is like insane. This is like uh, an insane, uh, insanely high damage shoulder charge and you get your entire melee energy back, right? And um, in a sandbox that has just had kind of cooldown gradients changed where, you know, almost every single cooldown in the game has been, uh, you know, made worse as a result uh, as a result of various sandbox changes. This is really, really strong. So uh, I'm actually quite excited to use like, you know, Shield Bash, Devour, uh, Spam, Peregrine Greaves and like Champs uh, in GMs this season. So I'm pretty excited for that. Um, I think it was a good change overall. Um, just completely refunding your melee energy is pretty OP, but I guess, uh, you know, we had to have something that uh, offset the fact that we don't have heavy-handed anymore, or old charge with light heavy-handed. Okay, next off we have Worm God. So I already talked about this a little bit. Worm Gods has basically taken the place of Syntheseps for boss damage for the most part. It's a much more forgiving exotic, especially given that most dungeon and raid encounters, you have a lot of time to get melee kills before damage, and the meter falls off way, way slowly, way more slowly than it used to. Uh, it is, I have the numbers with me somewhere. Uh, you know what? I'll actually open that right now because I was doing this on stream. Yeah, I have the numbers right here. So it's like five seconds for the first one, assuming you get that fifth stack and then four seconds and then six seconds and then eight seconds and then 11 seconds or something like that, or sorry, 10 seconds. So yeah, really, really long time for that entire meter to go down. And it's like 40% per stack. So worm gods are really, really strong. Um, really, really great. And um, I think, yeah, again, like I said in, the, in previous videos, uh, an example of a really good change that was done to an exotic that doesn't necessarily completely make another exotic irrelevant, that being Syntheseps, um, still pretty good, right? Uh, Ash and Wake, I already talked about this change, I think that, you know, you're not really using a fusion grenade to stun on stop, so not that important. And I believe the impact doesn't do non-DR damage, so it's like kind of useless, in my opinion, this is kind of a dumb change. But uh, I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess, right? It's not a negative change. Um, and then finally, yeah, there you go. Increased Glaive Melee bonus to 100%. Um, I'm not sure if the Synthos base surrounded melee increase applies to Glaive Melees. I don't think it does. I think this is just what you get. So if that's the case, then this is basically just Triton Vice. And uh, again, like I said, Worm Gods are just a much better exotic to use with Glaives, especially given the type of Rome content that you would expect Glaives to be used in. So yeah, that's it for Titan. And finally, we have Warlock. I think I said finally on Titan, but... Finally, we have Warlock. Um, Warlock has had a couple good changes. Balladors, unfortunately, uh, it's stackable 15% got converted to a tier four, which I think I already talked about. So yeah, not much to say there. Kind of sad, you know, less diversity in the sandbox in terms of damage stacking. Uh, and it makes this exotic kind of largely irrelevant uh, for the most part, so not great. Uh, Apotheosis Veil, um, yeah, people have been asking me if this is good. I already talked about this in my damage video. Uh, I've done some more Dragon's Breath testing with it, for example. Uh, this exotic is pretty overrated. Uh, I don't think it's... Like, people see the fact that you can spam, you know, incinerator snaps and fusion grenades or wh whatever nade you're throwing. And they're like, yo, this this exotic must be so good because I'm spamming grenades and melees. And you feel like your APM is going up, right? I mean, your APM is going up. You're, you're shooting, you're throwing, you're snapping more often. But what people don't realize is that a lot of the time taking the time out of your damage rotation to throw a grenade or snap a boss, even if you're using Dragon's Breath, uh, which I'll talk about in a future video, uh, is not necessarily increasing your DPS. In fact, most of the time, the way most people use Apotheosis that I've seen decreases your damage output. So we'll talk about that later, but uh, I did want to say that as a, as a side note. Uh, Felwinter's Helm, this is nice, right? This is just a quality of life change. Uh, just 
moving all of the weakening burst and duration uh you know all of that up a tier is just nice it is just a great change i like it felwinder's helm has always felt like it suffered a little bit from the fact that if you don't finish something like a mini boss then the effect is rather you know minuscule and pretty small duration pretty small um burst radius so that's nice and then finally karn scenes um if winter's guile change doesn't go through and you want to use something like a glaive build in higher level content then this is pretty nice i mean cure tier 3 cure in general is not a very strong effect but at tier 3 it's pretty good and um, a finisher giving you resto tier 2 for 8 seconds is also really, really good as well. That's that's basically like throwing a healing grenade every time you finish or anything. So this is like really, really good. Um, I, I think it's a really good change. Um, probably works really well with like Void Warlock to go invis and like get a finisher, give you resto tier 2. I mean, that's really strong. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see how that plays out. I mean, that's very much a survivability focused exotic only though. So I don't expect it to shake up endgame content too much. But yeah. Um, yeah, and it's on, it's on a class that already has access to it, like a lot of strong survivability options. Okay, so that's exotic armor. Uh, I've talked about that for way too long. I'm going to try and spend less on the other sections. That's like one out of eight that we need to talk about. So armor mods, uh, this isn't too complicated. Basically, armor mods will were all like nerfed kind of twofold. Um, the kickstarts were changed so that you can't use them without armor charges, which is kind of annoying. Um, kickstarts are almost always not worth using um if you're just using their normal effect and now that you're forced to use their normal effect and not their non-armor charge effect uh they're pretty much useless for the most part in my opinion uh because they eat all your armor charges when you should be using those on surges if you're doing damage and damage is typically when you want kickstarts uh because you're spamming abilities uh typically in neutral gameplay most exotics these days refund your um grenade or whatever it is uh pretty much you know as much as you need them to be stuff like sunbracers comes to mind so that's pretty annoying um i'm sure this has been discussed to death already but this change this 10 second change is absolutely horrible um i don't know whose idea at bungie hq it was to make a 10 second internal cooldown on uh in a sandbox where they're encouraging ability use uh every single season by you know various exotic armor buffs and sandbox changes is ridiculous uh 10 seconds is insane by the way like uh this is one of the most extreme changes i've ever seen ever since i started playing this game uh going from essentially almost no cooldown to 10 seconds is like the biggest leap ever like three seconds i would have understood even five seconds i would have understood 10 seconds is insane i'm glad they're sort of walking back the change by next season allowing you to stack the mods to bring it back down to one second but that is still ridiculous uh it should be like five seconds max 10 seconds is ridiculous that, that is just insane it's very very noticeable uh, i'm sure other people have noticed this as well but it, it's just horrible i don't know why this was ever something that was ever thought to be a good idea um all of these mods like the the mods that basically allow you to get uh energy on one of your abilities if you use another ability those were all nerfed as well uh, i'm sure those of you who have used bomber bomber is probably the most commonly used uh mod out of all of these had if you've used bomber this season you probably noticed wow this is horrible and it is horrible it's really bad um <laughs> i again just making it so that less and less mods are useful they do less and less stuff it's just decreasing the power of build crafting and um just sandbox diversity i don't know pretty pretty interesting change there are other ways to make the sandbox less ability spammy um like for example buffing exotic primaries was a good step in that direction but this just feels like you know making players more annoyed uh it's kind of like the throwing hammer change you know y it does what you want right you are you are effectively lowering the damage output of the throwing hammer but you are making your players suffer by making it just just feel like annoying to use right these mods are, are now uh, just uh, not what they used to be they're just annoying to use. um okay you know another, another thing that's kind of funny here right it says distribution gives two three four percent super energy for one two three stacks respectively what's funny about this is that in a previous patch note they said that they removed the functionality for distribution to give super energy they said that was unintended right they said that was unintended behavior even though it had been in the game for years and years and years they said it was unintended behavior so they removed it and then when players went in after that patch to test whether distribution still gave super energy first of all it did and they didn't even reduce it and now they're saying as if it never happened that distribution gives super energy so i don't know what their narrative uh, is on this you know on this armor mod uh does it give it super energy does it not is it supposed to is it not we'll never know but yeah it still gives super energy so whatever it gives less uh it feels like it gives less than it used to um i know this because uh we are currently speedrunning vow and we have a strategy where if to rejoin on warlocks and use phoenix dive to get our supers back faster and uh it certainly feels like it requires more dives than it used to so um yeah kind of annoying but whatever um 
I don't know if that's listed here. I, th I think the um, gradient change will be listed somewhere else down here. So we're, we're, we're going to talk more about like ability energy and how Bungie has changed it this season. But yeah, um, this is not very important. We're going to move on. Uh, weapon changes. I don't think... I don't think any of the weapon changes this season are, are particularly significant. I mean, this is always welcome, right? Um, that's always welcome as well. Autos and Pulse is definitely among the weaker uh, primary weapon types. Um, this, I don't think will change much, right? Uh, Glaive projectile was never like a big factor. You're typically not killing a lot of stuff with the projectile of your Glaive. It's usually just to charge the Glaive energy, especially in endgame content. So that's not a huge issue. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. This is nice but it's not necessarily like an important change. Now, this is a nice change, right? So whenever you're doing roam content, you now don't even need to shoot enemies to get glaive energy. Uh, if you're a, a careful player and you're using your glaive only to really get out of sticky situations or, or cross really dangerous uh, terrain, then you really don't even need any glaive energy besides what you get passively for the most part. Because uh, glaives are pretty resilient and they don't consume that much energy. So this is pretty good. Um, you know, it's a nice change. I'm assuming it's not going to be, you know, great in PvP because the longer you, you draw it around in PvP, obviously you're going to have to deal with people having Glaive energy despite not hitting you, but um, that's whatever. Um, the melee, I don't think this changes anything, right? Sniper buff, we've, ch we've talked about already, I don't need to talk about this. And uh, I don't think any of the sword stuff is important either. So yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, legendary weapon changes. Let's talk about exotic weapons. I don't think this change is going to do much. I've heard that the LFR mode on champs is pretty nice, but again, Vex fundamentally isn't a very good exotic primary because it focuses a lot around ramping and getting... A, it's like commit gameplay, right? Whereas a lot of other exotic primaries like Graviton Lance, for example, do not require you to stack up kills to become potent, right? Because Vex Mythic class is basically a very strong auto rifle until you get multiple overcharge stacks, right? Whereas something like Graviton Lance, it's a very strong pulse rifle, and every time you get a kill, there's a huge explosion, right? So um, that's kind of the problem with that. I, I just realized they, they made Revision Zero and Thorn a bullet point under Vex. So I guess uh, Revision Zero is now a part of Vex Mythic class. Uh, regardless, I've heard Revision Zero also um, like two burst uh, champions now, or like one, I, I don't think a one burst, but I think a two burst uh, barrier champions now, which is nice and all when, um, you know, until you consider the fact that legendary pulses with adaptive munitions also do that. Um, that being said, again, Revision Zero, uh, it's missing the number one most needed thing on exotic primaries, which is splash damage, um, to be, you know, a cut above legendary, uh, primaries, and it doesn't have any splash damage, and even the single target damage that it does do requires a lot of precision hits to charge up. So again, Revision Zero, um, it's fundamentally kind of never going to be a very, very, very strong, um, exotic primary compared to some of what we have in the game. Um, speaking of exotic primaries, Thorn, um, I think a lot of people have been using Thorn in PvP. Uh, the only real change to Thorn uh, this season for PvE is the fact that you can overflow its mag. Um, that being said, I, I don't see it being stronger than something like Osteo, uh, just because of how spammable Osteo is and how that poison spread works. Um, Thorn kind of is, you know, requires kills, I would say, more so than an SMG, and the SMG is just a lot better at spraying uh, a target down. So. You know, Osteo is still pretty strong in that regard. Uh, Osteo was also changed, and I will talk about it because I'm pretty sure it's mentioned. Yeah, it's mentioned over here. I'll, I'll talk about it briefly. Um, but yeah, that's that's Thorn. Okay, so next up we have the class Glaives. Now, the Glaives, uh, I don't think the Warlock change is super important. I don't think the Hunter change is that important either. The Titan change some people have been talking about, uh, you get a stacking bonus uh, to your weapon damage if you pass through the little Rice Dome, uh, the Rice Bowl Dome. And it's 5%, but it stacks with everything. Um, for the most part, I don't think this is really going to affect anything. 5% is very small, but I suppose um, we are kind of still in an era of Destiny where, you know, everybody doesn't have to be using an exotic weapon for damage, right? Some people are on Lumina, some people are on Izzy, but that's not their main source of damage. Um, really only like your galley user or your tracker user have to be using an exotic, or if you're solo, you probably want to use Dragon's Breath instead of like a Glaive. Um, but in team environments, if you have a Titan and, um, you know, everybody kind of already has their damage figured out, it's like free damage, right? It's like, why not? So maybe useful in that regard. Although I've heard that the bubble took a huge, huge health nerf and resilience nerf this season. Uh, probably unintentional, probably will be reverted. So um, that is interesting for sure. Uh, next up, we have Osteostriga. Now, Osteostriga, a lot of people were asking me to damage test how badly the poison scalar damage got changed. Uh, the answer is, so I have a number for previous patch, uh, Osteostriga damage, 
uh, all of the damage of one mag, right? If you hit, if you shoot one mag at a boss and you hit all crits and that's it, you just let go of the trigger and you, you, you don't, you don't shoot anymore. You just shoot one mag. Uh, I think the damage was around like 130, 138k. And now it's about, I think 107k or something like that. I have it listed here somewhere. Yeah, Osteostriga. It's like 106k, something like that, right? So I believe if we go to, yeah, if we go to show edit history here, yeah, it's like 138k versus 106k. So a 25%-ish nerf, uh, which is not massive, but certainly noticeable. Um, I really don't think this SMG needed to be nerfed, uh, to be honest. It was strong, but its niche was uh, very much carved out and didn't really extend or like go into, you know, ruin the, ruin the roles of other exotic weapons, I don't think. But, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of whatever. Still pretty strong exotic. Uh, okay, these changes, don't really care. Uh, Winter Bite, I did add the projectile damage as well as the melee damage of Winter Bite, which is surprisingly high, by the way, uh, to the boss damage spreadsheet. If you're interested, you can find that information here in weapons. You go to Glaive, you know, Winter Bite projectile melee is over here. And if we go to the single tab, which I think uh, will be more, a little bit more interesting, if we scroll all the way up, you will see, sorry, it's like dark mode, so the colors are a bit weird. You'll see Winter Bite over here, simulated melee banner of war burning fist X5. You see the damage is actually very high, like 200k DPS, assuming you can keep X5 stacks in a, in a simulated world. Um, and even if you don't do that, even if you use something like Biotic Enhancements, right? Uh, or I guess technically you could use like Triton Vice as well. Um, the, the damage is actually quite high, like 135k. That's similar to like Merciless, that's similar to Acrius, right? So very, very, you know, pretty good. Winter by melee damage is, is quite strong uh, if you use uh, melee buff stacking with that, so... Uh, I don't think that was actually changed yet. Yeah, the, the melee damage wasn't changed this season, but I thought that was something worth pointing out. Okay, uh, next up we have... Um, is there any other changes here that's like really important? Not really, no. Not really, no. Okay, yeah, these are all mostly aesthetic changes or QL changes. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's move on to the perk section. So perks, we have Danger Zone, Precision Instrument, and Kinetic Tremors. Heavy Grip, obviously not really an important change. Uh, danger Zone. So, Danger Zone, you can now rocket jump in Destiny 2. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen this. Uh, on the first day, I, I tried this out, and uh, it was okay, right? It was okay. Uh, I'll show you kind of how high you can go by doing this. Uh, it's pretty high, right? It's pretty high. However, uh, if you're really invested in going very high by using uh, some sort of boost, right? You can Lumina Grapple. And Lumina Grappling goes quite a bit higher uh than um danger zone boosting i'll show you that in a second here um so for reference when i did danger zone boosting at the same place in nessus right you can see this little um l-shaped rock i got to around the middle of that lumina grappling can go basically uh, to the ceiling right to, to the, you go very high right you go very high with lumina grappling uh it's around the same speed i think you accelerate faster with danger zone boosting but yeah for that reason i don't foresee uh you know danger zone rocket boosting to be you know a very important movement tech in like speedrunning or anything in the near future um for reference yeah this is like twice the height that i got with the danger zone rocket um and a bit faster as well uh the main problem also i would say with danger zone boosting is the fact that uh it only really works straight up you can't really boost yourself sideways very well and also uh it requires you to be surrounded by enemies so you have to be surrounded by enemies you have to be in an activity where you are not wanting to be using a sword right um and you're you know expending rocket ammo right you can only do it once you can't do it again midair right so you know it's just not it's pretty restrictive tech but uh, i mean it's cool i guess it's pretty unique i can delete these videos now I was, I was saving them for this video so i can delete these now <laughs> but yeah that's the danger zone change uh next up we have precision instruments so some people are asking me if precision instrument is going to be good they basically buffed it by like four or five percent uh no i don't think so the only so okay here's the thing about precision instrument right precision instrument is an on hit perk and it has five tiers, which means you have to hit an enemy five times with a weapon for it to become good. And so basically you want weapons where you're hitting an enemy very, very frequently, and you're going to be staying on that weapon consistently and just repeatedly hitting that enemy with the same weapon. So in, a, in an ideal world, that would be something like Retrofit Escapade, but Retrofit Escapade already has Target Lock, and Target Lock is a better perk than Precision Instrument in this regard, right? Besides the fact that PI probably ramps faster. So the only other options you're really looking at are stuff like maybe snipers and linears and I don't know. Yeah, snipers and linears, right? And the problem is, is that snipers, most snipers, a lot of snipers don't even have a mag that goes above five, right? So you need a perk like Envious or Reconstruction or something like that to make use of this. And so some people were like, hey, just, you know, is Twilight Oath with like Envious and Vorpal or like, sorry, not Envious and Vorpal, Envious and like Precision Instrument good. And it's like, no, because 
you have, uh, this is basically high impact reserves, but better, but you have to commit to using the weapon. And like uh, a 140 sniper like Twilight Oath, you're not going to really commit to using the weapon. And even if you do, you have to reload the weapon eventually. And every time you reload, PI is going to go down. PI is going to go down. This thing has a forgiveness tolerance of like one second, right? So it's a very tight perk. And for how tight and like strict its requirements are, you're not getting rewarded much for it. I mean, you have perks like bait and switch, which give you 35% and you can miss all you want. And they will continue to be up as long as you, ha they're like up for like 11 seconds, right? So PI is like, you know, very, very, I, I don't know. It's, it's, you have to give a lot for, you know, getting very little. And uh, the only weapon I could see being good on is the aggressive linear, right? So the aggressive linear being Doom Petitioner from this season, because each and every single hit from the aggressive linear burst procs it, right? So you can get this up to max stacks in two shots. And that's actually quite good. Um, that's better than Briar's Contempt if you don't have Surrounded. So if you don't have Surrounded and you want to use an aggressive linear, then, you know, you would use uh, Doom Petitioner. Now, the only problem with that is Whisper of the Worm exists. And if you're going to use a precision weapon, Whisper of the Worm does much higher DPS than Doom Petitioner does, number one. And number two, has much to higher total damage, right? The problem with aggressive linears is that Linears are designed around the identity of having high total damage and maybe like ammo regen, but aggressive linears don't have ammo regen and they only boost, you know, DPS from being that archetype by a small amount. So you have to have a really, really strong damage perk for it to be worth it. And the only reason why Briars is even in the conversation is because of stuff like Harmonic Resonance as well, where it's good on like the final boss of um, Ghost of the Deep, right? Samuma. Okay, so that's Precision Instrument, pretty overrated, I would say. We can move on and talk about Kinetic Tremors. Uh, I don't really need to talk about it. They just mean Kinetic Tremors like slightly less hits for certain archetypes, which is like, okay, whatever. That's fine. Um, okay, abilities. Abilities, um, the main thing that I'm going to highlight in this section, uh, this section specifically, all subclasses, is the melee stuff. Okay, so uh, they basically made it so that because people were really annoyed in PvP that you could basically uh, shoot someone with a shotgun and then instantly shield bash them. It was mostly shield bash, let's be honest. Uh, and then instantly shield bash them, you know, it's like a one hit combo that's pretty cheesy and they're kind of trying to avoid that in PvP, I assume. But unfortunately, this makes it so that one-two punch is a lot less compatible with uh, slide and sprint melees in PvE. Now, you can still technically use one-two punch with slide and sprint melees. You just kind of have to shoot early or shoot really late, which feels very, very janky. Um, that being said, uh, fortunately, the era of sprint slash slide melees is kind of over. Uh, shield bash is largely irrelevant in PvE, and so is seismic strike and hammer strike, and basically all of these melees that are listed here. They're all worse than frenzied blade and grapple meleeing at this current time. Um, that being said, you know shield bash is is pretty good with peregrines, but again, that's not something you're going to be using with a weapon because you have to be airborne for so long. So that is pretty much it for the sprint slash slide melees change. Wanted to talk about that. And for our final two things that I wanted to talk about, we have the cooldown gradient. So this is um, a very, uh, a rather significant change. Okay, this is a rather significant change. If you're using any sort of ability-based loadout or an ability-based build or an ability-based exotic, you're going to feel this change. Um, they basically made it so that every single ability in the game, no matter what you are using to give it energy, right? that energy is now based on the total duration of the base cooldown of that ability rather than a percentage of its actual time left okay so for example um i'm gonna assume this is the case right for example demo demo gives you around i think like uh eight nine percent of your grenade if i'm not mistaken um it's more on uh on certain other weapons like snipers but for weapons that you're, you're getting a lot of kills like gls for example i think it's like eight or nine percent ten percent something like that right and so now with this change if you have a grenade that has a longer cooldown it's not going to be a fixed percentage it's going to change it's a scalar it's a gradient based on the base cooldown of the ability and so i believe if i'm not mistaken the last time i read through this patch note before it actually came out when bungie was talking about this in twids um, this basically just makes all of the longer cooldown abilities worse and leaves all of the shorter cooldown abilities at, as the base, as the floor, right? So this is an overall across the board uh, cooldown nerf uh, for abilities in general. Um, and I, I think that's part of the reason, for example, why Bomber feels a lot worse than it does because that is a chunk energy uh, kind of perk or mod. And that affects, uh, that is affected by, I should say, the base cooldown of 
how long the grenade you're powering is or how long the, the class ability you're trying to power is, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, yeah, it's uh, kind of annoying, I think. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe a good change for the game. We'll see. Uh, as far as I can tell, I mean, I haven't played too much this season, but from when I have been playing this season, uh, it doesn't really impact the very, very strong and potent builds. For example, like a Banner of War builds. Uh, I don't, it's certainly not going to affect Peregrines because that's like full charge. Uh, it doesn't affect Arc Hunter. It doesn't affect Sunbracers. Like it doesn't affect all of the ability builds that are based around getting your abilities back instantly, right? Like it says here, for example, right? Like Combination Blow. But it does affect the builds that are kind of more subtle and more based on getting chunks of energy back rather than all of your abilities back at once. And those builds tend to be the weaker builds in this game. So uh, that's this is really going to hurt players that are using builds that are kind of middle of the road that are more about really getting chunks of your energy back by using your weapons or by using, you know, fragments rather than relying on broken exotics. So that's going to suck. Okay, anyways, let's keep going. That's cooldown gradient. Uh, all of this stuff doesn't really matter uh, as far as I'm concerned. There are some survivability changes here that I think I should talk about. I guess that's subclass changes. Um, throwing hammer. Uh, I think we talked about this already. Again, it took basically a 60% DPS nerf. Uh, if you're talking about Raj throwing the hammer over and over again, we talked about why that's uh, not a great change. Uh, Soul Invictus got a nerf for its sunspot duration. Uh, Resto got a nerf. I'm totally fine with this. This is a good nerf. I, I can I, I definitely notice it in PVE at the current time. Um, but it's still like, you know, it's still fine. Still feels uh, pretty strong. Um, let's see. This was a good change. I thought the Feed the Void slash Devour change was pretty good. And um, yeah, the, the stasis changes, I couldn't really feel them uh, for the most part. Although I, I yeah, I haven't really played Stasis Titan or, or World Luck recently, but on Hunter, I didn't really feel like the Withering Blade change for the most part. Um, this is kind of nice. Yeah, the Glacier Grenade reduction time is kind of nice, although I'm assuming in, in PvP that will be kind of annoying with the current artifact. And uh, yeah, we talked about the banner change already. Yeah, the banner change is, is fine. Good. Um, yeah, and then there's obviously a Woven Mail change to reduce survivability in general. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that's pretty much it for the sandbox. Um, some of you have been asking about Dragon's Breath testing. That is almost at its conclusion. I will tell you right now, Dragon's Breath is quite good. Uh, definitely the best solo exotic weapon uh, for doing damage. I'm, I'm sure you've probably already come to that conclusion on your own, but I will have numbers on that pretty soon. I'm going to make a video on Dragon's Breath in the near future. Uh, but for now, yeah, these are just my thoughts on the sandbox changes, the patch notes. I know this is pretty late, uh, but I was doing like a lot of final assignments and stuff because it's the end of the year. So yeah, I will... Um, yeah, I'll be making a video on Dragon's Breath pretty soon. It's definitely the most annoying weapon I've ever tested. It's extremely inconsistent, has tons of interactions with, you know, snap melees, grenades, any scorch source, multiple players, single players, just it's a mess. So hopefully uh, we can we can uh, not have to deal with that anymore pretty soon. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later.